Hello and welcome to G-Hub. I have learned to kind of hate this software. It's really complicated compared to its uh, older counterpart and really shouldn't be this complicated, but we're going to add a Game Pass game to this today. So one of the first problems with trying to add a Game Pass game is you'll notice I have Outer Worlds in here, and this is actually the Game Pass version of Outer Worlds. And you'll notice I've selected something in the Windows Apps folder. Now, if you were to try this yourself, so let's let's add a new game, shall we? We're going to go in here. We're going to go Program Files, Windows Apps. If you don't know how to get access to this folder, please look that up on Google. It's far too complicated to add to this video. Now, I happen to know that this is Halo Infinite, but if you don't, you can actually find out by the game running. I'll show you that in a moment. So I'm going to try and add Halo Infinite here. I want to play some Halo, and uh-oh. So this is a problem with G-Hub software, and whether Logitech wants to admit it or not, this is actually a problem with how they have coded the software. They have coded it that when you want to add a file, they have coded it to open the file. Now, due to the way Game Pass works and the nature of how Game Pass is set up, they cannot allow you to open the file with random programs. The only thing that can open it is Windows and through the games, the Xbox store and otherwise. There's there's a lot of things about Game Pass that are really terrible and don't work. But the point is, this is actually a error on Logitech's part and they seem to refuse to update it. So I'm gonna show you how to add this file manually. So we're gonna click okay and we're gonna click cancel because it's a sad day. Now. You can actually manually add these and go to a database generator to make a new code for it in the whole nine yards. And there is some benefits to doing this, such as you don't have that redundant default profile that this seems to assign to everything for no good reason. But I digress. We're going to do it the easier way so that you guys don't have to generate custom files. So we're going to add a new app. And you're just going to add any .exe file. It doesn't matter what it is. Try to remember the name. So I'm going to pick LGS 510. Open. All right, and you'll see that we have a profile here. Perfect. That's all we want. Now we have to close out GHub entirely. So go to your taskbar down in the bottom right-hand corner, right-click GHub, and go quit. You need it completely closed for this to work. So. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find our G-Hub settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to open a new file explorer. And your G-Hub settings are in your app data. So what you can do is you can go up here in this bar, click, put a percent sign, then type local app data, all one word, and put another percent sign. So percent, local app data, no spaces, percent. Hit enter, and it will take you to the app data for your current user. Now, when you come in here, you're going to notice a lot of programs have some stuff in here. We don't care about any of these except for GHA. So what we're going to look for is LG Hub. So Logitech G Hub is basically what it stands for. So we're going to scroll until we hit L. Okay, and you'll notice right here I have LG Hub. So we're going to open that. Okay, now you'll notice I have copy here. And I also have settings DB. We're, we're going to make a uh, copy of this so that you can do the same. So right click your settings DB, copy, and paste. Now there is going to come the time for a program because we can't obviously open this in Notepad. It's a database. It doesn't work that way. So I'm going to bring up a web browser here. Now we're going to search for DB Browser. This is a simple free program for just opening database files. It can do remote connections and stuff like that, but this will actually be able to open the raw file without any form of server or service or any of that kind of stuff. This is why you want this. So you click download. And then you would do either the portable version or the no installer if you didn't want to install it. I recommend just doing the standard 64-bit installer. If you could run infinite, I guarantee you, you can run the 64-bit installer. 
the program also runs better and crashes less. So 64-bit installer. Once you have that program installed, let me just pop this right here, if I can get my mouse buttons right. You're going to open it. Now yours is gonna look something like this. Let me crush this a little bit more. It's gonna look something like this and it's gonna be kind of hard to use. We'll fix that in a moment. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to take this out of full screen and you're gonna take your settings database and drag and drop it on here. Now you'll notice it has opened. Now all of this stuff, you kind of don't want to touch because if you play with it, you can cause GHub to crash and then it will overwrite it with a default that has no settings. This is why we made our copy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to browse data here. We're gonna click this little bracket with three dots and nothing will happen. Except for in the top right corner here, there is now text. Now you can edit the text in here, but it's almost impossible to see what you're doing or what you're changing. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna find the dividers and resize it so you could actually see what you're doing. Now, give me a second here, mine are kind of invisible. Okay, so right away you're gonna notice it says applications and then right here it says application folder and it's gonna have a game. So in this case, American Truck Sim. Now, you don't actually need to edit any of these, but if you wanted to change settings for them, you can actually do them in here. I'm not gonna go into that. To be honest, I don't even know how to go really deeply into that. You, it's really just basically put out in text and it's more a matter of understanding it. That's not what we're here for. So what you can do is you can either click these buttons to minimize them, or you can click in here and press Control F to find. And remember that we added that program called LGS 510? We're gonna punch that in here. And it's gonna take us to LGS 510. Now we need the profile. Give me one second here. We're gonna need the location of this file. So what we're going to do, and I found that you could do it through mount volume and get that, or you can manually add the file and stuff like that. But I found that it, the auto detection, though it will let you add the game, the auto detection does not work. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to straight up boot infinite. Now this is going to make my computer lag out and do some things. I apologize if the video is uh, a little more choppy. Okay, so now we have the game running. This is all you need. You don't actually need to go past here. So we're gonna go back to DB Browser and we're going to open Task Manager. So right click on the Start button and click Task Manager. And it will give you a window that looks like this. More specifically, that. So you're going to want to click on More Details here and find Halo Infinite. Click the little arrow to expand it, click on Halo Infinite, and go, go to Details. Now, if you look here, you're not going to have Command Line. So if you want to add it, just right click up here, select Columns, and in this, you'll find Command Line right here. This tells you where this particular program is running. So you'll see Halo Infinite running, and it's right here. See, program files, Windows app, Halo Infinite. So now what we're gonna do, let's go there. So we're going to open a new file explorer window. Okay, and we're gonna go exactly where it tells us to go. Now this is just to make it a little easier to enter text. You can actually just manually type that if you would like, but. So C drive, and then we're gonna go program files, Windows apps, and then we're gonna go 2544-2859, so Microsoft 2544-2859, like I said, I already know which one it is, and Halo Infinite. Now, this is where it gets tricky. 
So you're going to come up here to the top and you're going to click in the empty space and it's going to give you this text. Copy this. Copy. Okay. Keep this open for now because we're also going to add a logo, but copy. Now we're going to come in here and we're going to see our game tools here and we're going to put this directory in. Now this directory is going to be missing the game's program file. So we're going to add a slash so that we Hey, it's in this folder. Now we're going to type Halo Infinite dot exe because it is an executable and we want the system to find it. Now you're going to notice something different between this one and the Outer Worlds program that I've put here. Now it's not that the executable is different. That's just how Outer Worlds works. But if you'll notice, every single folder has two slashes. And if I try to save this right now, it's going to tell me there's a problem. Error while parsing value. Invalid string. Forbidden character after a backslash. Last read C colon slash P. Well, where is C colon slash P? Oh, look, it's right at the beginning. This is an invalid way of writing this for a JSON or a database file. It does not understand this. This will cause GHub to crash and a rewrite with default settings. So you'll lose everything. All you have to do is add the second slash to each folder. So there's one right here, one there, and the Microsoft weird long name, and then another slash. Okay. Now I'm going to click apply, but first we're going to do this other one, because if I don't do this other one, it, I'm going to have to search it and find it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy our directory here, and we're going to paste it in here. Paste. Okay, and then we're going to add one of these logo files. So let's take a peek. Which, which one do we want? That's way too small. Let's do... Logo HD, I guess. It doesn't seem to like underscores, so if it has an underscore and you want to use it, you might want to rename it. Obviously, don't rename it in there. Copy it somewhere else and rename it, but HD.png. And, very important, change the name of the game. So, obviously, it's not Logitech software for 510. It's Halo Infinite. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit apply here. And provided you have no mistakes, you're going to see it's going to refresh and come right back to the beginning where it was. This is good. Now, if you haven't closed G-Hub, do it now. You have to do it now or it will not work. File, save all. Okay, now we're not going to close this yet because we may have to tweak it further, but we're going to minimize. Now task manager we're just going to move back to where it was because the game is running and we know that now let's open GHub. if you guys are wondering how i'm opening programs so fast if you hit the windows key and start typing it actually will search your active programs so in ghub's case i'm typing g space hub so this is one possible outcome where it boots up and looks perfectly normal the other outcome is it gives you the beginning tutorials, in which case you have corrupted your database. You need to go back to the, that backup, that copy we made, delete the current file, and rename the copy back to settings DB, and it will restore your settings. Obviously, close GHub before doing this, or it will overwrite your old settings. But let's look. We added a profile earlier, and it was LGS. Let's go in here. Oh, look at this. We have a Halo icon. And it has a default profile, but oh, look at this. We have Halo Infinite added here. Okay, so let, let's take a peek and let's see if it uh, auto switches for us. So I'm going to click on a program so that default is available. Now I'm going to click on Halo Infinite. Okay, now I'm going to drag this down and you'll see that it says Halo Infinite default profile. Congratulations, you have just now added Halo Infinite to your game list and it now auto switches. Now there is a problem with doing this this way and that is that Microsoft names their programs with whatever the current update is. So 
if you'll see, this has two, five, four, four, two, eight, five, nine, seven, the whole nine yards. Well, when they update the game, these end numbers here are going to change, and so is this code with the game version, which means it will no longer auto switch. Now, that doesn't disable your profile, and if you wanna just get in and play and not screw around with them, I'm going to make a new profile. Okay, and you want your settings to safe. What you can actually do is you can come into details here and you can click set as persistent and it will stay that way until you change the profile and put it back to app switching. If you're not familiar with this in G-Hub, I assume it's because you're new, but you go set as persistent, yes. And now it will not change profiles until you come back into here and tell it to switch to a different profile, in which case it's going to re-enable automatic switching, okay? But it is the same process. You open Task Manager, go to Halo Infinite, and look at the look at the name, and you can then browse there and do it, or you can manually type it in. You're going to open the database, same way we just did. Find Halo Infinite. Okay, and then you're going to change these out for the new version with the new title. Save, save, make sure G-Hub is closed when you do the save, and then reboot G-Hub, and it will be listed right here for you to use. And once again, I'm going to drag this off so I can actually grab it. Click on Infinite, and then I'm going to click back on G-Hub, and you'll notice it's in Infinite as a profile. I hope that helps you guys. I know it definitely was... Uh, a learning curve for me. It really could be patched by them simply telling G-Hub to select a file rather than open. And uh, it's been multiple years since this has been a problem and they have refused to do it. So I don't see them doing it. This is how it was done. I'm gonna leave some shout outs in the description to the articles that helped me through this and got me to this point because it was a long journey. I'm also gonna leave a link to D db browser so that you can get it that and uh have a good one guys thank you very much for watching and i hope this helps and once again welcome to ghub let me close this so it stops you know completely and totally murdering the recording